Hello, hello dear viewers. A very warm welcome to our channel. It's very good to have you here. In today's video, we are going to have a look at how to inspect armature of this kind. This is a starter motor armature. We are going to inspect the condition of the commutator segments and the winding. This starter motor armature, it has multiple segments. As you can see, there are different segments and there are electrical wires that are soldered to each commutator segment. Each commutator segment has two windings. One is going this way and the other is on the lower side going in opposite direction. So there are two sets of windings on each commutator segment. All the wires, they are interconnected and they are insulated from each other. So they are not directly connected, but they are only interconnected through the winding. Now, these electrical wires, they are also insulated from the armature iron core. Here we have the iron core. It is a laminated iron piece in order to minimize ED current. ED current is a, a circling current that is unwanted current that is generated as a result of metal exposure to magnetism. Now, if that ED current is left unattended, it will make the armature to overheat. In order to prevent that, this iron core is laminated. Laminated means it is made up of a stack of uh, small iron sheets that are stacked together. So that way we can increase the resistance for the ED current and reduce the chance of overheating of the armature winding. Now there are three tests that we can conduct on this armature. One is called the 180 degree test. We will be measuring the commutator segment at 180 degree apart. That is one test. The other test is a bar to bar test. We will be checking the continuity between the neighboring commutator segments. And finally, we will be checking bar to ground. That is called the grounding test. So these are the three tests that we are going to conduct. Now, in order to have a good resistance reading, it is best to have this surface somehow smooth. So that can be done by simply sanding it with a fine grit sandpaper. You can use a fine grit sandpaper of this kind and uh, remove some of the residues on it. See the difference? Now, by simply sanding this, you can increase the resistance reading and make it easy for resistance reading. So start by sanding it. This will remove any debris or foreign material preventing resistance and uh, we will have a smooth reading. Now this way is a little better than the previous one. You see the, bar the commutator bars are now a little shiny. That will make resistance measuring easier. It is also a good idea to clean the gap between the commutator segments so that the debris and anything that can be conductive in between can be removed. For that, you can use a hacksaw blade. An old hacksaw blade can be used in order to clean it up. Can be cleaned in such a fashion. Removing any carbon debris, any debris from previous carbon brush filings can help get accurate reading. So, Now all the commutator segments are clean and let's proceed to the test. Now there are three tests as we have mentioned earlier, there are three tests. Let's begin by measuring the 180 degree test. The 180 degree test can be done by simply measuring resistance between 180 degree opposite commutator segments. Put your multimeter on the lowest setting, lowest resistance setting for our multimeter is 200 ohms. Then measure resistance at 180 degree apart. One point six. Rotate it a little. One 
1.5. See, it is reading 1.2 ohms. Spin it a little. One point three, one point five, one point one, one point three. You can do this. One point two, make sure that you have a nice contact between the multimeter props and the commutator. One point nine. Zero point seven. Now this is an indication of a travel. There should not be that much significant variation. We should be expecting about the same result. If there is a significant drop in resistance or if there is a significant rise in resistance value, that indicates travel. For example, for this particular case, we have found 0 0.8. We have found 1.2, 1.5. So there is a significant variation between the resistance values, which is not good. They should be about the same. If there is a very sharp drop in resistance value, for example, if it is very sh sharply dropping to zero, it indicates there is a short circuit. If it registers infinity, it indicates a broken wiring, that is an open circuit. See, this is also 0 0.8. Previously, we have found 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. So the 180-degree circuit test for this particular armature is not good. Now let's proceed to the second type of test, that is bar-to-bar -bar test. Bar-to-bar -bar test will be measuring adjacent, adjacent commutator segments. The value really shouldn't be a point of interest. Rather, we will compare the value with each other. So the exact number is not that much interesting. All we are going to do is compare the overall result of the commutator segment bar to bar reading. It should be about the same as well. So do this test for all of the commutator segments. Adjacent commutator segments should have a considerable, considerably they should have a similar reading. So make sure that you are doing this test if you have a doubt, you can also redo the test anytime. So that is how you can do bar-to-bar -bar test. Two point five. One point two. One point three. 1.4. If there is some uh, unexaggerated variation, it could be due to some dirt or dust particles accumulated over the commutator. You can clean it and uh, anytime re redo the test. And finally, the final test is bar to ground test. Every commutator segment should be insulated from the armature body or from the armature iron core. It should read infinity. For example, this one is reading infinity. We're reading infinity again. Do this for every commutator segment that will tell you whether there is a grounding circuit or not. If we register continuity, it indicates that one of the wire has shorted out to the armature iron core that is grounding. So it should be well insulated. So this is how you can perform the three armature tests, the 180 degree test, the bar-to-bar -bar test and bar-to-ground test. Actual values are not of interest. Rather, the resistance values that you are going to acquire should be similar. If there is a sudden change, sudden change of resistance, it means there is a problem with the coil. Either the armature, the armature has to be replaced or the winding has to be repaired. If the armature failed any of the tests, then it should either be rewinded 
or it should be replaced. So this is how you can perform the commutator test. Well, dear viewers, that is all we have for you regarding the tests that you can conduct using a multimeter on an armature, starter motor armature. For that matter, any commutator, commutator armature can be tested in a similar fashion. So if you like this video, please smash the like button. If you find this video helpful, share it with friends. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications so that you will be the first to get notified whenever we come up with another video. Until then, stay safe.